Westfield. Good morning, Westfield. Welcome to Tiger Talk Live, all things Westfield Technical Academy. You are back in the flow with Rob and Joe for the year of grace, uh, 1999, (laughs) 2019, which is really hard to imagine. Happy New Year to everyone. We hope you had uh, wonderful holidays, and uh, it's great to be back in the saddle again. Happy New Year. How are you? Doing okay. All right. That's good. That's good. Doing okay. Not great, but uh, okay. Well, Well, it's a start. It's it'll a be after point. this show. It'll be great. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So, good holidays. Yeah, very good holidays. Very busy. Traveled a lot. Um, different, but it was good. Did you have your daughters in town? Uh, yeah, they were in town. But but then I left town. So. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, right. So I only saw my daughters. Sunnier climbs. For, uh, well, I don't <laughs> know about that. So uh, yeah, it was busy. How about you? No, you were in Chi Town. Uh, we you? were in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Visiting the in-laws. The in the uh, yes, sir. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. The in the in outlaws. In outlaws. <laughs> no, it was fi- it was good. It was it was nice. We saw a lot of uh, a lot of family members that I had never met because my my you know wife is from out there. So met a lot of people. Did a lot of visiting. Of course, Chicago's wonderful. I never absolutely been. love love never love never been that city. It's got all the to me. It's got all the characteristics of all the good qualities of New York and Boston combined. Um, but it's you know it's on the lake, so it's it, you feel it feels very wide open. Uh, the food is wonderful. The architecture is really cool. Yeah, it's it's a really nice city. I have to get some. To, my <coughs> wife has been. She's got family. She's got an aunt in Chicago. Um, some one of these days. So and fun good. and fun fact. I just found out a couple weeks ago. The reason it's called a windy city. I always thought because of the wind off of the lake. That would have been my it, guess. It was it was noted from the, the all the hot air with the politicians back in the day. <laughs> That's how it got the nickname. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Certain daily family. We may have we may have a daily on staff. We might here have. Too. Yeah. I wonder if there's any connection. That's right. Could be. Um, how about you? How was your break? It was good. It was very busy. Phenomenal. Uh, Phenomenal Christmas for the kids. My my youngest's first Christmas in the new house and in the new house. Which that's is right. Cool. Which was great. So it was very busy, and I always need a, a vacation from my vacation once the kids are back. But it was good. Um, kids did. Santa Claus was very good to them. Um, I'm sure he'll be sending the bills along in short order. But Santa Claus was very good to did them. Did you hear what Bad Santa gave you during Patrick's second to last show? Gave to me? Yes. I can't even imagine. Bad Santa gave Christmas gifts to everybody. For you, it was one word. Triplets. <laughs> oh, jeez. No. <laughs> no. Mr. and Mrs. Lango. That's fair. Here, <laughs> Vincent was number last. That was <laughs> for sure. And, uh, he was 10 months old on New Year's oh, Day, wow. which doesn't even seem possible. And Rob, they gave you two hours less than a day. Two hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <'cause> just what <laughs> you need is what I am, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, Bad yeah. Santa was good to us this year. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Everything it was it was it was a really it was a really good holiday. Had my um, my mom with us and um, my was brother Anthony, who no That's longer right. lives in the area, who was he works in the pipe fitters union, so he's all over the country. Uh, by a happy slip of fate, his truck broke down in Scranton, PA, and it was a shorter trip to come home on the bus than it was to go back to Arizona, where his wife and his girls are. So he decided to come spend Christmas with us. It was good. I haven't seen him in over a year, so something out of a out of a Hallmark movie it's, it's, broke it's, down it's, in Scranton. <laughs> <laughs> 
unlikely places I know, Scranton, PA. And was your father-in-law? In, did he no, shuffle my, in from my, Buffalo? My, my father-in-law came for uh, Thanksgiving, oh, Thanksgiving, and he's right. going to join us. Uh, he's going to join us at the beach this mm-hmm. August, which was a happy surprise. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, and we're going to try. Actually, uh, my wife's aunt, my father-in-law's kid sister, is uh, in the hospital as we speak, delivering a baby. So. We're going to try to get out as soon as school lets out to, to see the newest addition to the family. And I have a nephew there uh, that my wife and I still haven't seen because we haven't been out in two years. Mm. So, so it'll, yeah, a lot, yeah, lot, lot going, going on. on. A lot going on. And a lot going on <coughs> here in the in the city, uh, particularly. Uh, first night was a monster. First night Woo! festivities. Um, I know Rob wasn't around. I wasn't around either. My family and I were doing different things, but... Uh, Following the press reports and the uh, the Facebook traffic, it, it looked like an unbelievable event. We had we had uh, I we I was estimating about three between three and four thousand there. Wow! And considering this the mist and the rain that came right before the fireworks, yeah. people stayed to see the fireworks show. And then we got a lot of feedback that people were watching us do the countdown on Channel Fifteen that didn't want to come out in the cold or the rain, and they watched the fireworks on Channel Fifteen. That's okay too. And they That's thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And the cake looks awesome on the green. Oh my so. god, I got a yeah. I, I was there for the cake lighting the next day. I don't know how I woke up the, that early, but anyways, <laughs> um, and I got to go shoot it at, at night because we shot it during the day. But I want to shoot it at night, all lit up on the green and stuff like that to finish. Well, my I show. happened to have been here after dark last night, and I drove by, and it looked pretty awesome. It does look pretty yeah. awesome. It it makes that whole park square glow. Yeah, just because of the different color, it's like a contrast color yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. It, Beautiful. So, and it is nearly a perfect replica of the 300th cake. 350 festivities well underway. Yeah, it it'll was be time for the grand parade before we know it. Be here we had we um, it. they were doing they were trying to count heads as people were coming into the children's museum. They had 1,300 people come in in two and a half Excellent. hours. Wow, that's so. Great. And they said you couldn't get into the ice skating rink. It was packed. I was going to say, what's the capacity of the facility? Who knows? I'm sure we we might have bended a few things. <laughs> <laughs> the fire regs. They weren't that's there. Right. They were kind of looking the other way. Not the people first were, time in a municipal celebration. People were working their way in and out of buildings, and they said the Boys and Girls Club was constantly packed. People were working their way out of that building. They yeah. went through a 1,000 s'mores in less than an hour. Wow. It was just crazy. A lot of marshmallow, Mr. Any of you guys, uh, were you out during the first <coughs> night, out and about? Yeah, got some. Yeah, you had fun? We didn't get to enjoy it. Like, I went with my she needs to use the microphone because oh, we're on the radio. Mi- mi- microphone, please. Yeah. We walked into the skate like area, mm-hmm. and we had to walk out. It was, it was so cool. It was my Can you make sure that one's turned on? There's like an on-off button on there. There you go. Try it yeah, now. there you go. <laughs> Much better. So it's crowded at Amelia, oh, huh? Yeah, no, we, we like walked in and then walked out. And yeah. then we had to walk in the rain back to my house. So it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, you were out and about, though. You were yeah. enjoying the festivities. And then it's, it, it, the problem was that if it wasn't raining, we would probably stay out and, like, went to, like, the Boys and Girls Club and, like, that little, like, park. But yeah. I saw you in the Children's Museum. I saw you cycle through the Children's Museum. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw you come through. Oh, no, wait a minute. I think I, did I see you outside. Doppelganger producer. Yeah. Pete. No. Yeah, I have three. <laughs> three of them? Yeah. Just in this vicinity? In the school. <coughs> three doppelgangers in a school? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll have to get back to that. Pretty <laughs> heavy <laughs> odds. Not, uh, now, you, now you know you have three potential guests. That's right. Have them all at the same time. So talking about the 350th. Well, um, Chef Mooch chiming oh, well, in. Yeah. Good morning, Please. Good morning. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Um, talking about the 350th, May coming up with the grand finale of it all um, is pretty exciting for culinary arts. Sure is. You guys are going to be busy. We're going to be producing over a thousand cupcakes. Not that you're cupcakes. not normally busy. Yeah, we are normally busy. A little extra busier in May doing the 1,000 cupcakes. 1,000 cupcakes. Apparently they won the, cake wa- the cupcake wars to... <laughs> that's it for the grand finale. We did, at least we didn't have to bake the giant cake that's on the green. That's yeah, that thing is twenty-two feet in diameter. I guess it is enormous. That would yeah, be a pretty big mammoth. Oven. How would you even execute something like that? The big a cake? cake that size. You'd have to make many smaller cakes and the the art of frosting and put them all together it's like a whole brick lot of, and mortar. Whole lot of buttercream. Yes. Wow. Get the. <laughs> 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 get the forklift. Guy with the pipe, pipe, 
piper, pastry piper. <laughs> pastry Gen- bag like generator. a fire hose. <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> get the, get Ice the, the cake. <laughs> so, th- so um, how's that going to play out, the thousand cupcakes? That's a pretty big production. Oh, yeah, that's going to require some extra time, some freezer space, and then... Um, we're going to get some students. We're going to go up there on that day of the parade and start frosting them that's what I, on site. That's what I and, heard, yeah. Um, it should be a good day. Yeah. Big parade, lots of cupcakes. I think there's some ice cream being served. They have a 1,000 Hoodsy Cups oh, coming. Oh, you can't have birthday cake without ice cream that's after right. all, yeah, right? HP Hood, HP Hood, I think, donated the Hoodsy Cups. That's super. They're looking for a freezer truck to store it in on site. You're right. They're working on that right now. Yeah. That would... Uh, That'd be a <laughs> key component. Yeah, to key component. Yeah, yeah. going to be here before we know so it. We don't well, have hopefully, smoothies. it will have good representation from the entire academy that day. We hope to have a few contingents marching in the parade. Yeah. Uh, maybe perhaps a float or two, uh, which would be really nice. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be but fun. I'm looking forward to it actually. <laughs> Not the least of which is the spring piece. <laughs> How was your break, Pete? Uh, good. I spent downtime a little. I spent uh, Christmas Eve with the family. I did a Polish Christmas, oh, which nice. is a lot of pierogi, mm. all kinds of pierogi, all different fillings. See somebody over there shaking their head. Yeah, no meat on Christmas if you're in a Polish family. Same in our same in our family. Italians, the Italians the same thing, too. Yeah, yeah. and then, actually uh, we're the best of both worlds because my wife is Polish, so. So you get a little bit of both? Get a little bit of both. So I did that, and then Christmas Day I woke up. too, Mr. O'Leary. We have lots in common here. Italians with Slavic wives. Yeah, I woke up and uh, just kind of hung out, and then I uh, relieved two people at Mahoyo College. I worked a dispatch shift over there. Oh, So nice. they could have the night off. Very nice. And spirit it was nice. Of, spirit of Christmas giving, I like that. Yeah. Three telephone calls all night and a fire alarm, and I watch TV. That's okay. <laughs> I can deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. It sounds relaxing. <laughs> well, my mother it was nice and moved. quiet. So we literally landed in Chicago, rented a car, went to her apartment, and and Christmas Eve we unpacked about forty totes. <laughs> oh, we, we went from z- zero to sixty, and by Christmas morning she was totally unpacked. Oh wow, that's, was, awesome. was, that's a heck of a Christmas gift. It then. was aggressive, and that's what she said. She goes, "This was the best gift I ever could have got," because she she couldn't have done it by herself. Yeah, that's um, so. It was different, but it was. Um, it was good that she was she was settled in her new place, and she was supposed to be in a year ago, and it kept getting delayed and delayed I and delayed. She's so. all she's all good. Everything's she's all, all she's all awesome. Good. Yep. So thank. All you right, you guys that. ready for your first break? Since Jeez, we're you know, trying to figure out the timing for this. I, one? I was going to say it's sort of a new flow here. Uh, yeah. But but we'll we'll get there before long. Actually, it's nice to have a little extra time. We always feel like we're huffing I, and puffing near the end. So exactly. Yeah. Let's take a break. We'll pay some bills and we'll be back. Please stay tuned. Let's hear the perfect combination when it comes to singing. A good voice and a great song, as Miss Patsy Cline lets us hear her great Decca record that is way up there on the charts, both country and pop, I Fall to Pieces, Patsy. <laughs> Love me too. The way you 
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook and rental formats available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com support for community radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company an independent family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years specializing in plumbing heating and industrial piping supplies on the web at BetsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. <laughs> Spending your money. That's, it's it's, it's, it's exhaust, break. exhausting my, my budget with uh, tremendous expenditures. We're Where back. did you find out? I, I actually found out I have a budget. Congratulations. Uh, yes, I didn't know that. So <laughs> so I, I'll, I got some stuff I need to get. I was, I was hoping you'd tell me that because I don't have any money to give <laughs> no, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, so, I found out I have a budget. We had a meeting anyway, before Christmas. That we're was back, Christmas Westfield. Present. Welcome back to Tiger Talk Live in the midst of a budget <laughs> conversation here. Spending money that we don't have, which always seems to be the way in, uh, in uh, the world of municipal finance. But anyway, good to be back. Hey, so, we got to keep all these great kids educated, well, right? Well, this is it. And uh, God knows, uh, taxpayers' money is extremely well spent in the Westfield Public Schools, but I, I say with a certain amount of healthy prejudice, probably no more so than it is here at the academy where, where the taxpayers get a lot of bang for their buck. Wouldn't you say, Mr. O'Leary? Uh, I would agree. And, you know, just something simple like, you know, again, we, we take it for granted because we live it day in and day out, but Pete off Cameron was just talking about you know, um, upgrading the studio with microphones, you know, two or three hundred bucks a pop for, you know, a little mic. So things kind of multiply at a school like this, right. our, our needs. There's always that delicate balance of the, the money that you have with the need for having the most current technology and equipment so that our students are able to train at the current industry standard and right. that's that's a really hard balance because as we know the best and the most current stuff is the most expensive so trying to navigate that balance every year is is tricky but all things being equal i think we do a pretty good job i mean we're not making a thousand cupcakes with a ge oven you get at home depot <laughs> easy bake if you easy will bake. <laughs> so a light bulb and a spatula <laughs> you know it's it, you know and you guys produce and we'll get into it but you guys you produce some serious quantity along with quality quality so right it takes professional equipment it's, it's true in our other areas like as well new beautiful oven maybe we could talk ah, about a combi that. oven yeah all right so why don't we get to our guess so we have surrounding us a contingent from our culinary arts department we already heard from uh Sh department chair chef phil muccheroni who's with us and uh why don't we why don't we go around the table and introduce our crew here yeah why don't we just do a quick nico we'll make sure you're talking you and, into yeah, the yeah, microphone sure. so everybody can hear you um, so my name's Nico. I'm in culinary arts. Uh, my name's Tim Naswitz. I'm also in culinary arts. My name's Preston. I'm in culinary arts. My name's Austin Woodbury. I'm also in culinary arts. My name's Christy. I'm in culinary. I'm a junior. Um, yeah. And the rest are tenth graders. <laughs> no. No. We got two tenth graders, and the rest are two, juniors. Okay. Yeah. I know. T I know Tim's a tenth yeah. grader. Yeah. Okay. All right, excellent. Try to throw me a curve, Christy. Yeah. So obviously we have a culinary theme going on. 
So second half of the year, if we could just let the audience know, we're going to kind of focus on our career tech shop area. That's right. So every week we'll be focusing um, on our shops and different facets of, of what they do. It could be some workforce development. It could be what they're doing in shop and a little bit of a little bit of everything. So we really wanted to highlight right. that. Well, we definitely want to focus our programs for sure. I mean, they're the reason why we're here. That's they're right. Why we do what we do. So yeah. So yeah, we're starting off the new year with the culinary arts folks. So chef, let's uh, let's kind of kick it back to you. Why don't you just uh, you, let's put it to you this way? You, you had a very busy December. I, I it probably we had it, a very busy first half of the yeah. year. Really, I, never mind. December <laughs> was right. sort of the frosting on the cake. But from if the, you'll pardon the. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the cupcakes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's right. The culinary uh, <laughs> reference. But uh, I guess really um, Thanksgiving, the buffet, Couldn't the dinner, resist, sorry. you really kicked it into high gear, and, and you guys went pretty strong until the break. So yeah. maybe we could just talk a little bit about how the year unfolded. and We generally come into September, uh, we hit the ground running. We generally start with a lot of catering events. Uh, including the general advisory dinner um and then a lot of the buffets the thanksgiving buffet was freshman orientation freshman don't orientation that. barbecue um the thanksgiving buffet was very busy we we did really well on that which led up to our holiday buffet which was probably the busiest we've ever been um and we've been having that buffet well i've been here 25 years and that buffet this past December was probably the busiest I've ever seen. It's become stuff of legend. I think so. <laughs> um, we're Westfield's little secret, and uh, I think the secret is out. Um, so we keep our students quite busy. Uh, they work. I would like to say that we try to do a lot of teaching on as much as we can on the side, but a lot of it is on the job training. Sure is. And it, I could have something planned to do with spice cake, but when customers call and say, I want fig squares and cookies, we do fig squares and cookies and spice cake. Oh, and fig seat. squares, Mr. Olari, fig squares. Uh, that's one of my kryptonites. <laughs> so we look forward to late winter. Uh, January, February, we start to slow down a little bit. We can get a little bit more instruction, a little bit more creativity out of the students. Um, and then about March, we start picking up again. Right. And we are right out until June. So we stay pretty busy. We rerun the restaurant. We're open three days a week. Um, with that and catering. We stay pretty busy. And the sprinkled throughout the occasional special function, f like we just had the Westfield Education and Business Alliance here. Oh, yeah. The Rotary Club has been having a yep. luncheon or two a Westfield year. Westfield Women's Club, the Tops, Tops. Group. Can't forget uh, the Tops. We, we have a lot of groups come in for their functions every year. Um, some of these groups have been coming in for the last 25 years utilizing our school. Um, so it's fantastic. We like to stay busy. We like to stay in, in um, good spirits with the city of Westfield. And we, uh, I think the kids do a phenomenal job. But let them tell you. What do you guys think? Um, it's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. On top of, like, if we do the buffets, it's, you learn a lot because you start doing stuff you never did. You do a lot of fish. You do, do a lot of meat. You do the carving. Um, but I think the staying after for like advisory dinners, that's where it really kicks in. That's where you, you know, really make a bond with your culinary mates. Like you really make a family there because the people who choose to stay after, you get to make the jokes, you get to joke around, you get to have experience with customers and stuff because you're putting extra time into it. So you get to like make a connection with culinary other than doing it because you have to. And, and let's face it, Christy, and Chef, I'm sure you'd back me up on this. In your industry, the reality of your industry is that your workday doesn't end, yeah. you know, with banker's hours. You're not working 9 to 5. If you're, if you're lucky, you're probably working more like 6 to 10. Yep. 
you know, on, a, on an average day, because it isn't just about the production. It's about service. It's about cleanup. It's about sanitation. Especially There's so many cleanup. factors. Because yeah. cleanup is, I would say, arguably one of the most important things. Because if the kitchen's not clean, you have the chances of illness. You have the chances of contamination. And it's just, so it's really important. Right. And especially, like, because I work at Westfield State. So, like, your boss can come up to you and be like, hey, can you pull a double? And you're like, yeah, like. Obviously, so culinary outside of school is very, you don't rest until your boss is like, We're, we don't need you anymore. <laughs> so. so. How do you, chef, and you guys can jump in, how do you figure out, like you do so much outside of the school day, so how do you, how do you get these kids to come back? I mean, that's, that's a challenge, but they're that's always cause That's going to be my question because, you know, I need people you, early in the morning and at night. Yeah. I mean, we think of traditional schools and... They go to school for six and a half hours during the day, and then they do their sports or clubs, and that's it. But we're we we are in fact running many businesses, um, and we need bodies. We need we need qualified people to run the freshman barbecue sure or the do. general advisory board. Um, how how do you manage that? Maybe, maybe you could give Pete a few tips. Yeah. <laughs> Is it extra we, credit? We are very fortunate, um, and like Christy was saying. Our shop is almost like a family. We don't have separate projects per se. We don't have one student working on a Ford, another student working on the Subaru, another student working on a Chevy. We have all students working to make one thing happen, the service of the restaurant. So they really do need to mesh together and they really do come together as a family. Uh, they clean together, they work together, they sweat together. Um, which gets them really close, which is a really awesome aspect of culinary arts that I think I love more than any th other part of it. Um, because they love what they do, when we have these after school or even weekend events, um, these kids come together and stay after to do it. Yes, we give them extra credit. Sometimes it requires a pizza. Um, it's amazing what teenagers will do for pizza. <laughs> All right, noted. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Pete. Um, but yeah, they they love what they do so much that they have no problems. That is awesome. staying after school. And some of these kids get here about seven o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and we don't leave sometimes till eight eight thirty at night. Um, and even for a teenager, that is a long day. It sure is. Uh, and they're dedicated. Yeah. They're dedicated to the point where they're going to say, I'm going to stay after. We're going to whip out this food. We're going to clean the kitchen um, and go home. And then back the next day at 7 o'clock. And certainly you must have the support of your parents, I would imagine. Yeah, my dad, like, because I know it's not just me, like, in the shop, but, like, I have a hunger for culinary. Like, I want to learn. I want to be there, get the experience. Um and so my dad is like, as long as you're not home and you're not doing anything that would get you in trouble, like do it. Like right. he's so happy that I'm able to dedicate my time to something that's functional that will help me in like future and give me the experience. That is awesome. Yeah, obviously you're in a you're in a very positive, nurturing environment. So parents really appreciate the that's fact great. that their student will stay after school, work hard, it's clean. Instead of go home and sit on their Xbox for exactly. the next four hours. <coughs> yeah. What? But everybody just laughed and then everybody stopped talking. Yeah, like, oh, I man, I'm giving up the Xbox. Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Don't Mooch tell them I can't do the Xbox. <laughs> so, Chris, yeah, what, yeah. Uh, why, so why did, you, why did you choose culinary? I mean, I originally came here for construction because my grandmother did it. So oh, I was like, that's like, you know, I want to follow in the footsteps. But I, I did the one days and as soon as I like held the knife and I chopped and I was like, this is it. There's no turning back. And I did the one weeks and I was like, if they don't accept me, I can't be in the school because this is all I want. Yeah. And so I was like really fortunate that I got in, that they like allowed me to just have the wonderful, op wonderful opportunity that I have. And it just, even through the arguing and the yelling and the screaming that happens in culinary, at the end of the day, you have to come back and you still have to work the people with you. Like freshman year, if you didn't like someone, you're best friends with them now in junior year mm -hmm. because you have to work with them. Like you don't have a choice. And so 
that's what I like. And, and, and what a great skill to develop for the yeah. rest of your life. And we talk about it all the all time. All the time. I mean, you know, it, it's never going to be smooth sailing throughout your life. There's going to be ups and downs, especially in the workforce, especially with diverse co-workers. And it's true. Your co-workers are not like your family. You don't get any choice. And diverse bosses. And like you said, if you're working for Westfield State or if you end up at MGM or, you know, a culinary place and they, they need you to pull a double because somebody called out, it, you can either say, you know, step up to the plate or... Because they'll find someone else They'll who find will. someone else. Well, that's it. And the reality in your industry is is that you already... They already assume the answer before they ask the question, right? They're just making sure. Exactly. And if you say no, that's a that's a very easy way to find yourself getting marginalized, right? And that that has an effect on how you advance in your careers. Exactly. Like um, at Westfield State, you are either a temporary or a permanent. And right now, I'm only a temp, so I have to reapply every year. And a, the only way to become a permit is you work those doubles. You get comfortable on every station. You can, like, run that kitchen, and they don't have to worry about yeah, you doing in something. In other words, you have to prove yourself, right? And so when you say yes to those, and especially because I'm new, they're, like, really looking for it. They're, like, really excited. I I don't want to, like, put, like, I'm, I'm very humble, and I'm very, like, thankful for what I have, and I don't talk about it a lot, but... Like I, my chef and my boss, they 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 come to me and they're like, we're really glad that you're doing this. We're really, really proud of you, and so that's like really like, it's nice to hear that. That's awesome. It is. It's satisfying, and you know your your efforts show. You must have really good uh, sh- teachers in culinary arts. Oh yeah, they're great. Yeah, they that's put awesome. up with me, and so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's good. And this is what I love about doing the, the show, Joe, is, you know, I, I didn't know her level of passion right. until we had a, a chance to, you know, sit across the table from Christy and really kind of talk to her and kind of go to that other level. Right. So we, know, we know where she is. Yeah. We know what she's doing. But that's about it until we hear, the, you know, about these other layers, which is awesome. What do you got planned in the future? Have um, you thought about that? I'm probably going to go to HCC for two years. And then transfer to Johnson and Wales. I'll do an English major and a culinary major, um, and that way, if the culinary doesn't work out, I can do food journalism. Nice. And then I'm gonna try and work on a cruise as a food person, and then probably go into the navy, and then after that, travel around. Wow. Yep. She's got a plan. Pretty good plan. <laughs> yeah, gotta have a plan, you, even you may, if you deviate. She may enjoy the cruise ships because I've always thought about going to work for like Disney, doing their entertainment division or something. Yeah. Just live on a ship and kind of yeah you do get a little time off yeah because like the when love. when the boat goes somewhere <laughs> you go somewhere right exactly so yeah it's well there's it's certainly they wouldn't remember that too young certainly yes. a lot out there well that's pretty good thanks for sharing uh let's see oh the the baton is being passed yeah, Austin. Yeah, Austin. I, I guess, uh, oh, yeah good i have to sure um, <laughs> and also just try not to sound so excited <laughs> about <laughs> it yeah <laughs> Um, you're you're tenth or eleventh? Yeah, I'm tenth grader. You're tenth, okay. Um, culinary's been probably the most enjoyable part of my school life ever since third grade. I've breezed through academics. It's been I've never had to study outside of school. I can go in, get a hundred, walk back out. Um, one of the lucky, lucky ones. Lucky you. <laughs> yeah. My parents are starting to yell at me. Hey, start studying because you're gonna have to. I still don't. Yeah. But um. <laughs> Culinary has provided, like what Chris was saying, the after school things and how Chef was saying family. I enjoy coming to school and I enjoy staying after and it teaches me how to deal with people who I might not necessarily talk to at all and otherwise. Um, Tim, me and Tim have become better friends since culinary. Um, I've met Nico and Preston, Chef actually kind of knew you before but um so austin when you decided to come here for ninth grade did were, was your mind kind of set on culinary no i actually hopped around a lot i came in wanting to go into it because of my liking for electronics and things like that um switched to construction when i took the one weeks and then my one of my friends was like hey you should look at culinary so i did took the one week and like christy i was like yeah that's it construction okay it's okay if i get in that i'd be happy Mm -hmm. but this was my main then i got it and i was happy so and both the (coughs) if i recall chef both your your 
tenth and eleventh grade class is pretty pretty packed. They're full. Correct. You're yeah, we're you're full. full. Yeah. And actually, another thing that surprised me was the uh, wasn't culinary the most selected. It was out of this year for the freshmen. Uh, last year. Last okay. It was last year. Yeah. 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 That that was cool. Already. Yeah, about producer, every twenty minutes. Producer Beats telling us it's uh, just it's just flying by again. Yeah, you guys are about uh, forty minutes in. Time for another break, so uh, please stay tuned, and we'll be back. By the old Moon Main Pagoda, looking eastward to the sea. There's a Burma broad a settin', and I know she thinks of me. For the wind is in the palm trees, and the temple bells they say, Come you back, you British soldier, come you back to Mandalay, come you back to Mandalay. Come you back to Mandalay Where the old flotilla lay Can't you hear their paddles chunking From Rangoon to Mandalay On the road to Mandalay Where the flying fishers play And the dawn comes up like thunder Out of China Across the bay Ship me somewhere east of Suez Where the best is like the worst Where there ain't no Ten Commandments And a cat can raise a thirst Cause those crazy bells are calling And it's there that I would be By the old moon main pagoda Looking lazy at the sea Looking lazy At the sea Come you back to Mandalay Where the old flotilla lay Can't you hear their paddles chunking From Rangoon to Mandalay On the road where the flying fishes play And the dawn comes up like thunder Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used ebook and rental formats available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com support for community radio on wskb is provided by bets plumbing and heating supply company 
an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BetsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. It's Tuesday morning from 6 till 8. Wow, it's Tuesday with Bob Plass. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. And we're back. Uh, 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 little, yes. Um, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd pull a little surprise on people. Of course, everybody's familiar with the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra. But I, had, I had to find little, that song. A little known, little known tune, and the uh, the lyrics to that are actually Rudyard Kipling's poem okay. on the road to Mandalay with a couple of little alterations. But phenomenal, uh, phenomenal piece. Yeah, that of, one was uh, not in the 120,000 song library. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> a, a little out there, but it's a great, great tune, and he really swings it like he does everything else. Anyway. Back to back to the topic at hand, which is culinary arts. That was for the girls in the office. It was for the girls in the <laughs> office. Yeah. Patty Lekransky, this goes out to you, babe, with love. <coughs> Pete, I'm curious, who's your esteemed colleague to your left? Uh, I'll let her introduce herself. Hold on. Uh, hi, I'm Amber Forrest. I'm in graphic arts. Hey, Amber, welcome. Hi. What's your role today? Well, I'm operating the cameras. Excellent. You're 10th grade, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Everybody like this the aspect of shop? Or? I mean, I've never really tried it before. I've, this is the first time I've been in here, That's really. It. Yeah. I think, personally, yeah, I just I think know. it's cool when we do our show and we look over and there's students from graphics that are active participants getting exposure to this really cool field. So, And, and ho- hopefully you're doing all that you can do to minimize the glare from the top of my head. I didn't have a chance <laughs> to powder this morning. So. <laughs> oh, maybe can we... Not under a light, which is good news. Hey, can we do some? Can we do makeup in the future? Uh, well, I heard there was a makeup shop here. Powder on Joe's head. That's it. Line. Yeah. I mean, makeup. I have some in my bag. You want yeah. some? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm not directly under a light, which is a plus. Well, that's welcome. It's cool seeing you back there. Excellent. All right, we're back with. Co- we'll have graphics on in a few weeks. We'll really dive into it. But uh, yeah, we're back deep with dive deep from. dive, if you will. <laughs> um, Back with Austin. I think we left off with you, Austin. Yeah, you got a lot more to to share with us, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, you were going through exploratory. You were thinking of IT, construction, and you did a yeah. culinary. I'm a very diversified portfolio there. Yeah. IT and construction. I color. still follow outside of school. I still follow some of those pursuits that I had, like me awesome. and my dad and grandfather work on projects and stuff. Me and my uncle work on internet security, so I still follow that. But. Once I took the one week and I couldn't, I had to. What was it about it that, that got you? Well, my cousin, uh, Nate Duffy, went here. Oh, that's and took, right. Yes. Uh, culinary. Well, that was a few years back. Yeah, that was, that was a while ago. He's in South Korea now. Is he really? Wow. Uh, deployed. But um, he went through. He knew Mooch, so that was part of it. Um. My friend's sister went in, uh, Ashley Hebert. So that those she now both. owns the subway yeah. here in town. No way! She got married, right? Yes, yes. she did. That's all. Yeah, I saw her actually at adv- ad advisor in the fall. Yes, and she bought the subway. Yeah, good for her. Yes, yeah, so those were driving factors, along with just the fun factor of cooking. I like the stress in the kitchen. Also, that's not something most people say. Mm-hmm. But I like having pressure on me. I do better under pressure. Yeah. So. It's interesting because I do think people feed off that energy yeah. in a positive way. So that's cool that you recognize that characteristic. And again, that's going to prepare you for a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a lot of energy in, in the culinary because I can hear it through the wall sometimes. Oh, there you so. go. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know who that is. Oh. Do you have a favorite aspect of, of the shop? I really like the person-on-person interaction with mostly with all of my school years. That's been the big thing with me is the social interaction. Um, I've learned, especially in the last year, a lot about people and myself, which is good. But the cooking, the 
friendships I've made, like Tim, I wouldn't have had that friendship, I don't think, without culinary. Um, even people who I don't talk to as much, Christy. Um, it's like we've said, it's a family, and I really enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, that's super. Question that I had for, and I, I have it for everybody, but just I, I thought of it while we were at break is, so Christy, for you as a junior, you're coming near the end of your time. Yeah. What is, what sort of the, the most, um, how do I want to say it? What's the most, the most appealing aspect of the business for you so far? Um, I think it's. And then I'll ask the same to Austin and then everybody else can. I think it's the personality you get. You really get to express yourself in the food. When you get to cook, you can have a recipe, but you can really own it if it's yours. Like if you can, if you know the skills, and I think that's like one of my favorite things. Everybody starts at base one, but you see all these countless chefs. Everybody learned the basic knife skills, the basic seasonings, like how to work it, but they all made it their own with their own personality, and it, I think that's really just, I'm excited to be able to, like, per, like not promote myself, but, like, move forward in the business mm -hmm. and hopefully own my own business one day and be able to become one of those chefs who, like, got it, have a signature thing, have a book. Like, that's... Any areas of specialization emerging, like pastry, garmage? Um, probably just... I had to throw that one out there, <laughs> Chef Mooch. <laughs> probably, Very good. <laughs> probably just regular um, bakery. I grew up making quick breads and cakes with my mom, so that's really like kind of like where it is, like deep down, like in like in my heart, like that's like that's where my love is, is like decorating cakes and like like if you see little kids like walk into a candy shop and the face light up and like mm -hmm. that's such, like, it's really nice. I love to cook, but I hate to bake because I don't like the precision. I don't like to measure. My it's wife is the baker in the family. She's cool with that. I just can't. We had a senior, and she just would throw things in, and she had it perfect. And I'm, hmm. she didn't need, didn't need to measure. Vera, she was great. She could own her own business and be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what Can't she wanted. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what she wanted to be. Pastry oh, and neurosurgery. Yeah. It's a one-stop shopping, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Austin, how about you? Areas of specialization? Um, I tend to be more range uh, cooking. I can do bakery. I'm good at it. But I really like the creativity you can have in cooking. Like me and Tim and a few of the seniors last year made a chowder. And we all really enjoyed that. That was very good. Um, but I personally in the also, I really believe culinary, even if you don't take it as a trade, like I'm going into the military and things after. So even if you don't take it, it'll be with you. Like I'll come out of the military, I'll be able to cook and I'll be able to prep mm -hmm. things for myself. I won't have to do any go out to eat as much. Yeah, I mean range especially. I love meat, that's, that's another thing. Um, barbecue, I cook most of the stuff for my family mr tulumas's wheelhouse oh, yeah. i'm gonna have to bring in the smoker for these guys to play with one of these days That'd be fun. <gasps> yes pete does a lot of good meat products oh. and i made a killer chili too yes you did that was that was good i i, I was able to replicate it which is nice <laughs> yeah so meat barbecue i cook most of my family's food now my mom doesn't cook it like at all so she's been relieved of her yeah. duties. <laughs> she's happy about that. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure there aren't too many complaints. Yeah. So awesome. Next next yeah, time line, so Mr. Olari. All right, Preston, you're up. Alright, so I chose culinary arts personally because during the one weeks I made a chicken basil pasta that for some reason I took so much pride into it. And I thought it tasted amazing, and it made me want to just continue in the field. Um, Did you have your kind of sights on maybe culinary, or were you kind of wide open when you came to the school? 
I was, if you told me I was going to be in culinary a couple of years ago, I probably would have laughed. Yeah. Um, and now I love it. Um, I wanted to go into aviation when I first came here, but I realized there's a lot more to aviation than I thought. It's not just I get to be cool and fly an airplane. I have to actually learn. <laughs> um, uh, so it's been working out culinary. Uh, yeah, I happy. Catering is probably the best thing I've you done like in recent years. I love meeting new people. And the idea of bringing food to somebody and then being very happy and very grateful is just great. Um, also, serving is great because you get to meet new people. You get to have new uh, ties to possibly people that could be your boss in the future. Mm-hmm. Talk about um, that, too, right, Chef? All the time. Yeah, networking making connections. and making connections and... I mean, the fact that you, you operate a live restaurant, I mean, that's, you know, that in and of itself is is pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's easy to get people to remember you. It's not easy to get people to remember you for all the right reasons. That's one of the, mm. what's one of the best lessons you can learn at this stage of your development, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Hey, Preston and, and the rest of the group, are do you, I'm, I've always been curious, do you f- kind of follow recipes or are there times where you can just go off and create your own entrees or bakery products or is it a little mix could you guys talk about that a little bit or chef you can chime in too if you want. i mean i feel like a recipe on range is more like a guideline like this is like this is like the outline of what you want but then with chef rogers and mooch they're like if you have a good idea go for it like okay yeah. they really push creativity which i love and i really i'm really grateful that they do that because we had a rice a chicken and rice soup competition oh yeah we're gonna talk about that in a little bit too um yeah and so i believe mr tulumas was down there judging yeah (laughs) and so one of his 12 meals in the day (laughs) (laughs) hey we don't mind i've never (laughs) seen a human being consume as much as that man consumes in the course of a day and stay as skinny as he does that's Uh, a neat trick right there i Mm. one that i have (laughs) never mastered and probably never will yeah um but because like it no, the recipe didn't ask for red pepper, which Preston did, yeah. and that was really good. And it didn't ask for lemon, and I added it. And it just like you really, it's just like this is how like if you do if you follow the recipe, it's great. But if you want to own it, here's like here's the basics. Like here's a body you can fill it. Like it's a, just a shell. Yeah. So there's guidelines, chef, and then they can they can kind of deviate. To a certain degree? Yeah. When it comes to range-type recipes, we tell them, use it as a guide and add your own seasonings. Kind of experiment with it. Whereas a bakery recipe, that is actually, in scientific terms, a proven formula. Mm -hmm. You have to have exactly that amount of stuff for that product to actually rise, come out good, cook properly, have the proper sweetness ratio, all that um, do you so ever do it out of the ratio just to show what a bad one looks like? <laughs> we just have a lot of students. bad ones come out of <laughs> culinary arts that the customers don't see. Right, no, I'm but just saying yeah, just to show them, hey, here's the right way, here's the wrong way. Well, the wrong way usually appears itself when they <laughs> measure wrong. Yep. Um, and that is very apparent, and they learn from that. Like, yeah, I could have leveled that off, or I could have used that a little bit better, and no, I didn't measure this properly, and the product does not come out, and they they learn yeah. by their mistakes, yeah. which is we want them to make mistakes here, and that's just the way to do it, and to let them know that, yes, you can play around with cooking, but baking, you really need to follow that proven scientific formula that is called the recipe. And what about if they come in and say, hey, I want to make a... Um I don't know creme brulee. We and you're like, well, we've never done that before. Will you? Will you? Are you always introducing new kind of desserts or recipes? That I know it's difficult because you have a budget too. I mean, you're running a business, so you just can't all the time go off the rails and just buy all these ingredients and make stuff. So how do you balance that difficulty? <laughs> yeah, um, but not impossible. We we try to work with what we have mm-hmm. and. 
Um, this is a milestone for my career. This is my 30th year of teaching. Yeah, wow. Um, I still love doing it. I love getting up and coming in in the morning. But you work with what you have. And if we can afford certain things, we do it. Um, it, it definitely helps with more customers, more open days, more catering. Mm -hmm. um, the kids can actually learn a little bit more by we can get more ingredients. We're not practicing with lobster tails and, right. uh, you know, sea scallops and stuff every day. But um, when we have a chance to introduce new things to them, we absolutely do. That's great. I love creme brulee, Mr. O'Leary. Yeah, sorry, it nerve. No, man, nerve. That's yeah. it. Made, I don't know, I triggered another yeah. thought of baked Alaska. Ooh. Maybe a baked Alaska before the end of the year. Wow. And also another one of our administrators, uh, Mr. Kevin Just Daly. That's what I need, a baked Alaska looking at me, right? <laughs> I look like a baked Alaska. <laughs> Mr. Kevin Daly, he's been uh, really advocating for um, a breakfast component. Oh, he's been talking about that since October. At Tiger's least. Pride. So um, maybe that's something you guys could that's, think of. That Mr. Mr. Daly's favorite meal of the day is big breakfast. You know, maybe a Tuesday, Thursday from 7.30 mm -hmm. to 9, something like that. Just throwing it out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we run a menu. <laughs> for uh, the restaurant every now and then we do breakfast for lunch mm, yes. and um, it gives the, the students a component to work on that kind of meal and we're still open at our regular time um, which we can then promote it and mm -hmm. sell it for that but um, yes Eggs Benedict and Baked Alaska I'm there Whoa and a <laughs> That's a conversation <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys have the option of taking your final break or skipping it up to you. Let's what, we go to 45 now? Yeah, go to 45. 45. So a you new flow here, so we're a little clunky. Yeah, we're working yeah, it out. We're working out the flow. It's I up to you guys. Roll with let's it. keep going. Because we got to okay. hear about Tim soup. Uh, All right, rock and roll. Adventure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No soup for you. <laughs> and it was soup for you. A lot at that. Four times lunch. Um, yeah, so yesterday, what was going on? And how, tell us how that came about. Well, um... We decided to have a soup competition yesterday, and there were four initial judges, staff members, and one of them was not present for the situation, so I was chosen to be a judge. And with that, I got to try all of my classmates' soups. I got to judge them based on their presentation, their taste, their additives, their decisions on whether it should taste like this or taste like that. With Preston's red pepper flakes as a garnish, which actually really enhanced the flavor of the soup, or Christie's lemon juice to counterbalance the saltiness of the soup. And overall, I just got to try four great soups, and I was a little too full for my lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so was this something that was kind of part of the, the curriculum for the day, Chef? Where did you come up with this soup competition? I kind of uh, like that. Occasionally, we can uh, allow the kids to do these little competitions. They love to team up, make the same product, but add their own little flair to it. Um, it's kind of like a little junior um, Iron Chef competition. Mm -hmm. or sort of. That's exactly what I was that's thinking. What I was, that's what I'm trying to arrange for the seniors towards the end of the year. Trying I'm trying to, to get somebody to donate a, a protein. And we're gonna have a. We want to have a uh, Iron Chef Mr. competition. Mr. Tulumus is the chairman. Yeah. No, that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be very funny. That would be funny. I like cuisine. <laughs> that would be very funny. Well, we have a stage in there, so we can pull that <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'm trying to pull that one together. I'm, I'm reaching out to some people to get some proteins because I know their budget isn't set up for that. So. But we're gonna film the whole thing. I want to do that. That's yeah. so oh, much fun. Yeah. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be fun. And and that's cool because you you were like self assessing, you know, yeah. your classmates, and it's another another great measure, right, Chef? From a oh yeah, you know, from a, a grading standpoint, if you will, and creativity and all that. It's it allows the students a little bit of creativity with the the recipe, and they really take ownership of it. Um, and they're proud as peacocks to come out there and present their their product and um, it really goes a long way we'd like to incorporate that more and more into the menu um, not really sure the whole logistics of it mm. but we'd like to take four groups of soup and see what we can come up with and then maybe try to merge them all or or individually serve them each day or um, have the student soup of the day per se we're, we're still working on that 
but as long as we can try to give the students more ownership of their yeah. product instead of just follow the recipe and we're going to serve this um and i know in the past chef you guys did the uh the senior class project yes right where they had to create you know their own um, buffet their own buffet and menu yeah and i know they took great 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 pride yeah they in, love doing that. that those are coming up shortly and yeah, we'll have we dates on those very soon and are those open to the public too yes they are okay those will be our regular buffet days um that the students or the seniors are doing their final projects and is uh, that where they they kind of um what's the word i'm looking for uh introduce some of the um ethnic foods yeah, they, as they, well they pick a theme it could be you know it could be a holiday theme it could be an ethnic theme it could be you know whatever they are they could be a christmas theme it could oh, be paulina whatever. Clean or her Polish the Polish theme last yeah. buffet. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll never forget it as long as I live. It was outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah, and they really get that's their their point in their <coughs> senior year or all of their senior year. They're working on management um, to actually be the chef of the day, run all their right. brigade, yeah. um, assign the, the the projects to each of the students. They take over for myself and Chef Rogers yeah. for the day and they run the kitchen yeah that's a really um, cool from event. opening up turning on the ovens really? to closing down the pot sinks and turning off the machines and yep. going home and they can work in pairs as well correct oh yes yeah yeah that's it's a, a lot for a day yeah but, um, they really rise to the occasion yeah that's cool i know you guys just do some incredible things down there you know when you really stop and kind of reflect on all the things you accomplished and then we, we didn't even note that the first half of this year has been exploratory so you know all of that in the hopper when, too yeah when you're in a 10 11 week you guys are pretty buttoned down you got a really good pulse on the restaurant but then these poor chefs every other week you know they're dealing with their seniors who you know are they they know what's going on but a whole crop of freshmen mm -hmm. coming in and every day every week you know they probably have um I don't want to see zero skills, but very limited culinary skills. And then uh, I know a couple weeks ago they were actually they were on the floor for the first time. It was their first week, and these guys were on the floor. They did the holiday buffet serving, yeah. and I mean it. When I and told it, the food was outstanding for sure at the holiday buffet, but given how crazy busy it was and it was we came down after the lunch waves and it was standing room only and it was it was physically hard for me to get through the door to get to the table which was a good thing the service was tremendous yeah yeah they were smiling and happy i mean just so and that is our, our so cool. like the first four days of our permanent freshman after exploratory if that didn't have those kids running away by the end of the day, which none of them did, <laughs> right? Um, that's a great test. Like, welcome to culinary arts. We're going to be as busy as you're ever going to be right. today. Baptism that's, by fire, that's if you will. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that's kind of like culinary too. Like, that's like the heart of culinary. I I'll go into work, and there's people I like at work who I talk to. They'll just throw you on. You, if you have no knowledge beforehand, they'll give you the briefest of like. This is basically what you're gonna have to do, but now serve ten people on stir fry that you've never done before, and it's right, you're gonna be great. Yeah, It'll be great. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. You're you're fine. And and when it finally comes off, they're like, yeah, obviously you had it under control. Like, they're not surprised. They're like, yeah, you sh like that was your job. You got it done. Good for you. Five. Five-ish. Wow. Five minutes, yeah. It's eight, five, uh, eight seven. Forty. seven. Your clock's off. 8.38. We have a time differential here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Synchronize. Got to synchronize, Pete. So, any Tim, anything else? Because we've got to get to Nico for the last five minutes. Anything else, though, you want to just kind of share your passion, where you think you might be going? Um, just, just general info? I'm just letting life take me where I'm going. I've, I'll go where I need to, where I like, where I don't like, and... I think you might want to stay in the culinary kind of field. I enjoy culinary. Yeah. I love how you really find out who you are through culinary. You find out how you work under pressure, how you work with others, how you can work in a pressurized environment, per se. And you really find out your abilities and your limits. And I really like that about this show. Yeah. I have always said if you could, if, if you've had some experience working in a high-paced restaurant industry, well, you know that better than anybody. You can pretty much kind of 
kind of take on any I, any job. I did that in high school and college. Uh, in addition to waiting tables, I was a line cook. So I and it's experience that I value to this day. Not just because I can cook and I enjoy cooking, but because of that pressure cooker yeah. factor. Right. The pressure cooker, yeah. if you will. <laughs> I can't resist today. I'm yeah. on fire. It's a new year. <laughs> My director's over here just shaking her head going, oh. I get worse. That's the sad thing. I get worse. <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right, Nico. So um, let's hear from you. What do you have to say about culinary? Um, well, first, I want to just start off by saying something that's been said here today by my fellow classmates already. Um, I think it's a good thing that regardless if we do end up going into the culinary field for our careers, we walk away with an invaluable skill. That's going to follow us for the rest of our life. Um, I just, like, I'll sit there and I'll watch people who are, like, in apartments or whatever, and they're having the microwavable meals and everything, and then we can saute our chicken and everything, mm -hmm. make ourselves a whole meal and everything that's full of nutrients, and I think that's a yeah great thing to walk away with. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how healthy it is. For families to to be able to cook with you know farm to table or just natural ingredients, yeah. So that's kind of struck a nerve with you, huh? Yeah, that's kind of one of the big things. Yeah. About that. Isn't it nice to be able to walk around the outside of the grocery store and get all your mm -hmm. stuff and not have to go to the inside where all the processed stuff yeah. is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have a certain passion um, in the kitchen. Yeah, or I think you like to do the dining room. Um, I like kind of everything. Okay. A little bit more mm -hmm. range. Yeah. Um, I think it's nice because you could take something like working in a cubicle, like an office environment, and then you take this, and it's completely different, and I kind of like being able to move around a lot, hands-on kind of work like that. And you're, I'm sorry, 10th or 11th? Uh, 11th. You're 11th, okay. I lose track of you guys after freshman year. I apologize. So have you started thinking about what lies ahead for you? Got a little bit of time to plan. Yeah, a little bit. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to be. Okay. in the future yeah excellent well you guys um chef mooch the the pride is open tomorrow correct we are open tomorrow oh. from 10 45 to uh 12 15. Yeah, come on sushi by. Roll. Sushi i was roll. just gonna California say i don't have roll, my yeah. menu i actually i don't think menu? i got it in the email no. so um what's on the menu uh what's on the menu tim um for soups tomorrow we have a mexican black bean soup with a salsa topping on top for a garnish um, friolas negros if you will <laughs> Um, we also have a cheeseburger chowder. That's oh, I love the one of my favorites. Yeah, widely acclaimed cheeseburger chowder here. Oh yeah, um, fromage de carne. I anyway. <laughs> um, my inner <laughs> for our garmage station. We have a sushi roll or a California. Twice in the same broadcast, Chef Mooch. Twice with the word. <laughs> yeah. Um. The California roll will have standard rice, uh, crab meat, avocado, avocado mm. cucumber. cucumber. I'm making it, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just what about our entrees? Uh, for our entrees, we have a curry chicken over brown rice. And I've never had that before, so I'm looking forward to trying that. Mm, one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, we also have a shepherd's pie with seasoned ground beef, nice creamy mashed potatoes and corn. Looking forward to Sounds it. Sounds outstanding. And oh, we yeah. also have a flatbread being served tomorrow. What's on the flatbread? Uh, on the flatbread, we have sliced ham, salami, and pepperoni with mozzarella, herbs, and roasted red peppers with olive oil on a house flatbread. Salad selection tomorrow? The yes. salad will be, you'll have your regular salad, and you can also have a sushi roll. Right. Well, okay. That, that's, yeah. All right. So Great. come flatbread on by does. and have some lunch. Absolutely. Yeah. Back Good way to end up the 2019. week. 2019. Yeah. That's it. Do you ever make homemade cheese in shop? We have. Yeah, what kind? Uh, mozzarella. That's uh, that's uh, one of the easiest for students to do. And we'd like to get more and more into that. Yeah. And you can make ricotta right after. Yes. You guys do so much down there, man. I know. It's great. Well, it's that time. That's it. So we want to thank everybody for listening. Um, I will be uh traveling next thursday i have to go to um 
Greater Lowell Tech for a meeting, so I will not be on the air, but uh, our assistant principal, Kevin Daly, will be filling in for me. So, and actually the following week, I have a meeting in Springfield for, for the next two weeks. You'll be getting a little slice of heaven with Rob and Kevin. Uh, and uh, I'd ask you to please stay tuned for the superintendent spotlight. I can hear them all behind me. Uh, it's your time to wrap with Chris and Zap. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank.